It's Talk Funny, a podcast by Mark Bailey and other comics from all over. We ended up in Japan because we wanted to see if a subway where 100 people form 101 man queues to get on the train. All at the same time, the Talk Funny podcast from NagoyaRadio.com and Nagoya Comedy. Here's Mark Bailey. Welcome back to Talk Funny. I'm Mark Bailey. We're here with Steve Howard again. Welcome Ooh. back, Steve. And uh, you guys can't see this, and lucky for you, but uh, we're in a very cramped office, and uh, I use my office. I have to use it for tax, mostly as tax compliance. <laughs> it takes most of my time. It takes more time than actually my running my businesses. Also, I'm in a midlife crisis, so I, I bought some things that I will deny to my relatives, <laughs> because why aren't you coming to New York? Well, because I don't have any money, because I've <laughs> spent it on midlife crisis stuff. Don't knock the symbols over there, guys. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the office is kind of a metaphor for my life. So if the office is not together, you can imagine I also have in real life a lot of things that are just half finished and things I wish I'd never started. Speaking of which, <laughs> our comedy shows, you know, our batting average is not too good, actually, because mm. we we played at a lot of places that aren't there anymore. <laughs> the scores, and in my case, yeah. not there anymore. And I don't think uh, you were maybe in the audience, uh, Koala Cafe yeah. and Moriyama mm. yep. Ward. We played there two times, I think, and they're not there anymore. We pl- uh, KJ's at yeah. two different locations, and they, yeah. they've went out of business both times. So what is the secret to our uh, success? <laughs> <laughs> secret is we actually don't like comedy clubs. Well, when, yeah, when, when one place closes down and we start playing at a new place, then it's like an all-new audience, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, and then we had uh, the elephant in the room, another place here in Sakai, is apparently going out. Yeah. And all of those things have one thing in common, the Goya Company. <laughs> it's not like every place Nirvana played went out of business. So what is <laughs> But, you know, maybe it's, I, I kind of, I blame the crowd. I blame the, the guys who, I, you know, I, I want to go to a comedy show, but I don't want to pay more than 500 yen for a beer. No. Yeah. Why would you want to have a good time with 500 yen? I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, you know, it's not like New York. Twenty-eight dollars for a cocktail. Now that's now you're talking. <laughs> well, their audience just hasn't figured out what we did. Is you drink at the uh, the convenience store before you go to the show. <laughs> a nameless uh, venue owner once prophetically said to us one time when we walked in with two highs, and he said, <laughs> "Those things should be illegal. The nine percent, sixteen ounce, tall boys. They should." be illegal because bars cannot compete and now he no longer has a venue <laughs> but uh 7-elevens are popping up everywhere <laughs> <laughs> so don't blame it on nagoya comedy blame it on 7-eleven but you know it's not it's not all our fault i mean throat cancer had something to do with that and insulting audiences and, uh, april cash had something to do with that so <laughs> Now, what I'm Maracas. saying is karma. <laughs> karma is a cruel bitch. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But but I but I agree with her. <laughs> Especially Jewish karma. <laughs> it's it's a really bad thing. So <laughs> yeah, and I was talking about one of the podcasts. I was mentioning yentas, and I grew up with a lot of yentas, and I kind of was touchy about it. So I got some strongly worded emails from people I'm related to that said I'm not allowed to say yentas anymore. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying that the yentas wrote those letters. <laughs> if I were to say that, the yentas would be angry about me talking about them because they don't like me saying yenta. But let me ask you a rhetorical question. Why would there be a word yenta if there were no yentas everywhere you turn? <laughs> All right. So for the um, Gentiles, <laughs> yenta is a loud, mouthy woman, but I'm being redundant. A loud... <laughs> Mouthy woman of the tribe who's always right. Oh, this reminds me. I was watching Billions. Billions. It's a Netflix drama. It's got Paul Giamatti. I really like him. He's he's really he's really good. He was in Sideways and he was in Man on the Moon. He's a very likable character. He's one of the leads. Billions is about a it's about a Wall Street firm, and they're always being investigated. And I actually worked for a firm like that, so I Boiler Room the movie was actually about I'm not sure I can't prove it was about my company but it was uh-huh. very very similar to mm-hmm. what happened so in Billions there's a scene where Paul Giamatti plays SEC uh, prosecutor mm. and he's having an argument with his wife about how to not lose his job and how you know which cases he should see and which would be better for the family mm. and his wife said something that no wife has ever said in real life <laughs> what she said was well, you're the expert on that. What do you think? I've never heard a woman say that to a man ever. 
Without irony. I've, my wife has said, oh, you're the expert. Every time it's the word expert. Oh, and you're the expert. Okay, Mr. Expert. What do we do now, Mr. Expert? Okay, Mr. Expert. No, but this one in this in this drama is, well, you're the expert. What do you suggest? And I said, Wait a minute now. This is not reality. Uh, another one was where she said, well, I don't understand your argument, but I trust you. I've never heard that. I've never heard my wife say that. Another one is, well, I'm sure it'll all turn out well because you're in charge. <laughs> Not without irony. I'm sure it'll turn out well because you're in charge. <laughs> Whoever wrote the parts for her, they don't have the intonation right. You know, I, I remember, um, yeah, my sister even when I went over and she said, "Oh, so you're this big CEO and you're ra- you're running ten businesses." And I said, "Well, I, when I introduce myself, I don't say it that way. I'm running ten businesses." <laughs> Sounds like Jerry Lewis. I'm this big man, and I'm this big man in Wall Street. <laughs> but would you uh, like to, uh, you know, invest in my company because I'm running ten businesses? Because I know everything. Uh, that's my sister and my my yenta uh, <laughs> mom t- <laughs> talking. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hello, Patreon. Enough about me. What do you think about me? A- anything? What, what were we talking about? Yeah. My yeah. So the office is a metaphor for my life. Kind of like this thread, uh, kind of unfinished. See, uh, yeah, everything's in flux. Everything's in flux. You don't have to give your age, but you're not you're not up here in our age range yet. I'm Forty nine. So. But have you? It hasn't hit you yet, right? In my experience, it hits you the day after you turn fifty. In my experience, <laughs> it's like you know, it's no big deal. Fifty is just a number. You know, I wake up the next morning, my knees are on fire. What happened? <laughs> it's just a number. How does it? How do my knees know how old I am? You, you haven't had anything yet. Uh, I mean, I've had some stuff, yeah, but uh, not nothing that I thought was life-threatening, let's put it that way. I want to address something. My voice is a little hoarse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm a brawny. <laughs> going to pony up to that joke. So, no, my voice is... <laughs> I'm getting heckled by your fellow comments. <laughs> What's that strange laugh in the room? <laughs> I'm a little hoarse, actually, today. I don't know if you can tell. But, and the reason is, I, I was at yesterday all day working in different office buildings in Japan, getting on and off elevators. And getting off the elevators is what made me hoarse, because for the hundredth time, I had to say, I have to get off before you get on. Yes. Don't you people know how <laughs> physics works? You're not getting on. It's a small space. I was here first. Yep. I was here first, okay? Let me off. You're not getting on. You're going to get on. You're going to get on. Listen, I want to get off. I want you to get on. I want to. I want you to want me to get off. Like a cheap trick in Budica. I want you to want me... I want you to want me. Dan, da, 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 da. That's a good parody for the fake blues. I want you to want me to get off the elevator. Please help me get off the elevator. Help me help you. And there's about eight different times. Yeah. The elevator doors open and stampede. Hey, this is a small place. This is not Wrigley Field. Yeah. Will you let me off, please? <laughs> and so I've got this thing where I, I just become a, um, a giant tarantula spider, and I just grasp both edges of the door nobody's gonna i will set this elevator on fire if you don't let me off all right with me in it no i was gonna say i live in a condominium we live on the sixth floor and that's the primary reason why all of my neighbors hate me because if they're standing right in front of the elevator door on the first floor when i get off i walk through them you know because yeah it's it's i i'm the person getting off the elevator i have the right away i've even they don't get irony either sometimes i'll say to them I was planning to leave this way. Should I pick a different door? Oh, wait, there's only one door. Get out of my freaking way. And and this is the same people. Same people every yeah, time. Yeah. Hey, remember remember 20 minutes ago? Yeah. When I said I can't get... It's still the same elevator. It's a physics... It hasn't been repealed yet. The laws yet. Go goldfish take elevators. I didn't. Know I was that. I was here first. See, see. If you want to get on to where I am, that means I was here first. So if if we were standing in line, we would all have our back. You, I have my back to you. You wouldn't be trying to rush me then, would you? No, because I'm in front of you, right? You wouldn't walk through me, would you? No, because you're standing in a queue. You can't walk in front of me. Well, guess what? You can't walk through me now. Try it. Try it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, uh, gaijin, okashi. Yeah. That's strange. Yeah, it's this thing called physics. <laughs> Let me off. So that's why I'm I'm hoarse. And then same thing with the with the subways. You know, 
these these guys. I'm here first. I'm waiting for the subway. This guy stands in the center, right. wants to get on, and I'm like, uh, hey. You know, there's people on there, right? <laughs> you know, this is the door, and they're probably going to walk where you're standing. And then they're going to go around you into where I am, but I was here first. So, boop, and I just push them. As soon as the train comes, I push them sideways. Yeah. One time I pushed them the wrong way. But anyway, we won't talk about that. Uh, train, sorry for the delay, two-hour delay. That subway is red now. You're lucky I pushed you sideways. I, it's not what I wanted. <laughs> That's some of the things with it's just something about Asia. I've had Asians, I've had Chinese, Taiwanese, Thai, Koreans, Japanese saying, you know, you don't understand the Asian mind. I think I do. You like to cheat. You like to cheat. You like to break line. I, I get that. After 28 years, I catch on quickly. All right. Hello, Patreon. We're going to end this and the Mark Bailey with Steve Howard. We'll talk to you soon. Again, I'm Talk Funny. Thanks, guys.